Thank you, Father, for today. We give you praise and glory and honor. You are worthy. You are holy. You are powerful. Father, be glorified. We thank you in the name of Jesus tonight on this broadcast. Move. On today, move. Heal. Deliver. Restore. Review. Confirm your word. Holy Spirit, have your way. And let Jesus alone be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. And God's people said amen. Esther John, welcome. Danny David, welcome. I saw Woody Fied, welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome. Good evening to you. I saw Twin One Laurie. Please share as you come on in. You are unstoppable. You are unstoppable. You can't stop me now. Prophet's mouth, you're welcome. You cannot stop me now. And none can stop you today. It's too late. Thank you. Dorothy, welcome. Sylvia, welcome. Joy Thompson, welcome, welcome, welcome. Adrian St. welcome. You cannot be stopped. DJ Evren, welcome. Thanks for inviting followers. Prophet Smile. Mariama, welcome. Adrian, Adrian, yes, thanks for inviting. Melissa, welcome. Good evening to you. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Eta Beta, you're welcome. Hi, hi, hi. Hello, hello, hello. You are unstoppable. Deborah, you are so welcome. You are unstoppable. We've had a great week. If you missed yesterday and two days ago, the last three days, the last two days plus today, go watch them. Sapphire, beautiful name, Samai, beautiful name. You're welcome. Crystal Chance, you are so welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You are unstoppable. Let me say this right away. The bigger the destiny you have, the bigger your fight. The bigger your destiny, the bigger your fight. Pastor, I don't know why things, be, I have to fight before I get anything. I don't know why my life is, honey, it's because of your future. You're carrying something heavy. You're welcome, Lioness Double Three. The bigger your warfare is determined by your destiny. Less, oh, okay, thank you, Lord. Leticia, welcome. Prophet Manning, welcome. Gogoras, welcome. I have three words that God gave me in preparation for this service. So please share, Elizabeth, you're welcome. I don't know whether I should share it now or later, but there's a word, three words. The first, the Lord said, tell somebody, I believe the Lord meant me. He said, announce it, on command your day, you're welcome, that your prayers are answered. Your prayers are answered. Now, there are many conditions to that. That is, if you have been praying, if you've been seeking God, Curly, you're welcome. If you've been interceding and praying, the Lord told me this morning, and this is almost about 10 hours later, Tell them your prayers are answered. I had to write it down. Curly, thanks for sharing on Facebook. Your prayers are answered. Camelita, I love that name. Williams, you're welcome. Preville, you're welcome. Your prayers are answered. Funke, you're welcome. Your prayers are answered. DJ Irvin, you're welcome again. Your prayers are answered, the Lord said. The second thing the Lord told me this morning to announce to this family, is this. There shall be a performance of that word that God gave you. Our CCG Tulsa, you're welcome today. 
Pastor Caleb. You sure he Caleb, I tell you, bro. <laughs> Thank God for you, sir. Yet there shall be a performance, the Lord said. There shall be a performance of that which God promised you. Now, I don't know what God promised you. I wasn't there. I am not a witness, but you know that which God promised you. He said, I should tell you. I know who you are. If I knew who it was, I would have called you, sent you a text, sent you a voicemail, email, but I don't know who this word is for. There shall be a performance. And Father, I receive it from me and my household in the name of Jesus. The third thing the Lord said I should announce to people today is this, that it's yours by knowledge. It's yours by knowledge. Now, again, I don't know knowledge of what. The Lord said there's something somebody's looking for. You've sought for it. You've looked for it. I don't know if it's a diploma or a job or deliverance or healing or something. I don't know. But the Lord said, tell them that it's theirs by knowledge. By knowledge. You shall know the truth. Stephen, you're welcome. And the truth you know shall set you free. Hallelujah. So, whoever you are, I have no knowledge of what, but by knowing, by knowledge, by knowledge, by knowledge, you and I, we wish we knew 20 years ago what we know now. That's why you cannot get Michael, you're welcome. Thank you. Michelle, thank you. You cannot say I know enough. I wish you and I know, knew 20 years ago, 15 years ago, 25 years ago, what we know now. Oh, it would have been a different story, I'm telling you. But the Lord said, forget the things that are behind. Pressing on forward, onward. Knowledge, knowledge. Now you know about spiritual transactions, about things that go on, about altars, about the spirit realm and the human realm and the physical realm. Now you know that things just don't happen because you happen to be a nice Christian. Uh, uh, uh. No, now you know that life is deeper than you thought it was. Now you know that it's not by power nor by might, but by the Spirit of God. Now you know that there are men who are oracles of God. Now you know that God has put some people in place to be a covering, a shield, a, a prophet, a pastor and authority over your life and now you know that you can't fight by yourself alone that you need this person and that person now you know that there is a way you can sow a seed and break the power of hell now you know that nothing happens by chance now you know that when light shines darkness disappears now you know that every handwriting written against you and I have been blotted out, wiped off by the blood of Jesus. Now you know that the supreme sacrifice of the blood of Jesus has set you and I free. Now you know that there is no other blood that need to be shed because 2 Corinthians 5, 2 Corinthians said that the blood is shed. Now you know that any blood looking for any altar, looking for your blood, 
There's an altar at Calvary that should answer. Now you know that Jesus is the supreme sacrifice. You don't need to sacrifice to nobody and nothing no more. Now you know that the Lord will fight for you and you will hold your peace. Now you know that all things work together. Come on, somebody, for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Now you know about spiritual positioning and spiritual influence. Now you know about spiritual authority is giving you power over all the power of the enemy. Now you know that things just don't happen because you happen to be a good person who can cry. Oh no, things happen. Now you know that there are spiritual buttons and spiritual levers and spiritual forces that make life to work together. Now you know that the heavens just don't open because you're a nice guy, that these heavens have buttons and there are ladders that go ascend and descend. Now you know that you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Now you know that there is power in the name of Jesus. Now you know that there is power in the blood of Jesus. Now you know that one will chase a thousand, two will chase ten thousand. Now you know that no matter what the enemy has done, no matter how many gather together against us, for our sakes they shall fall. Oh, now you know that it is written, The Lord is my light and my salvation, of whom shall I be afraid? Now you know that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now you know that heaven is sure, and we have the mark of Jesus Christ upon us. Let no man henceforth trouble me, for I bear in my body the mark of Jesus Christ. Now you know that laughter doeth good like medicine. Now you know that if two of you agree and ask, it shall be done. Now you know that nothing you eat or drink shall kill you because he has given us immunity that nothing we eat or drink shall by any means harm us. Now you know that in your body, let me say it again, that there is a mark you may not see that is upon your face, your name, your life, your destiny, that the, the powers of hell and the powers of this world cannot stop or touch or erase. Somebody give God praise. Now I know, now I know, now I know that if God be for me, who can be against me? Man, I feel like Sunday morning. Now I know, now I know, now I know that by his stripes I'm healed. You can say anything, you can do anything. Doctor can say anything, attorney can say anything. Until the heavens speak, the earth cannot move. Now I know that God is good. Now I know that praise can move God. Now I know that my fasting is not in vain. Now I know that my praying is not in vain. Now I know that God is for me and no one can be against me. Now I know that tithing works, sowing seed works. It may take a season, but seed, time, and harvest shall never cease. Now I know that God is good and his mercies endure it forever. Now I know that's enough preaching right here and we are good. Glory be to God. You can't stop me because I know. I am unstoppable because of now I know that God got my back. He got my back. Now I know that this word is true. Now I know, if I know, then you can stop me because I know that I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. I know that God sent his son to be the preparation for my sins. I know you can't fool me. You can't lie to me. You can't cheat me no more. You can't rip me off no more. Now I know that God is good and his mercies endure it forever. I know. 
I know that none shall be barren in the land. Now that I know, you can stop me. Now that I know, I am safe. Now that I know, oh, watch out for my twins. Now that I know, you're going to get a wedding invitation for my, to my wedding. Now that I know that he took captivity captive, Witches, wizards, sickness, disease, warlocks, native doctors, Uji, Ouija aboard uh, people, Juju people. Now I know that he arrested all of them. All of them broke their power and dragged them in the streets openly. Now I know that I can do all things through Christ. I was ignorant. And they could stop me. I was ignorant. And they could push me around. I was ignorant. I didn't know. That my God shall supply all my need. According to his riches and glory. By Christ Jesus. I didn't know. That God is on my side. I did not know. That God would favor me like this. Now I know. Ay, 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 ay. It would be terrible for the devil and his mother-in-law. Now I know that all things are passed away. Now I know that there is no condemnation against me, for I'm in Christ Jesus. Now I know you can't stop me. I am unstoppable. Now I know. I didn't know, and you used to beat on me with guilt and condemnation. Now I know. That the whole thing, now I know, now I know, now I know I'm unstoppable. You could stop me, push me around, because I didn't know. I was an object of pity. People felt sorry for me. People, I was just a recipient of everybody's pity, fake or real. But that was then. That's another message. That was then. <laughs> That was then. That was then. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Now I know that the blood of Jesus brings the captives out of the prison where there is no water. Now I know that my God is an exalter, a lifter. That was then when I didn't know. You could push me around. You could slap me. You could cl climb on me at night. You can lie to me. That was then. Now I know. Your hating me will hurt me. Your lying against me will help me. Now I know. I didn't know. Now I know that the word of God is the power unto salvation. Now I know. I didn't know. Ignorance can be a disease. Let, let's move on. I feel the Holy Ghost just push that out. Ignorance can be a disease. It's one of the reasons why you are being stopped, that they used to stop you. Now you can't stop me no more. You can't rip me no more. You can't rip me off no more. You can't cheat me no more. It's over. Now I know. Mm. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Now I know that the devil is not a lion. He is like a roaring lion. Like is not real. He's like. Now I know that the devil is actually afraid of me. Pastor, I don't know why in our family bad things always happen. Honey, that family, the devil is trying to authenticate and show you that there's something special about that family. I don't know why I've been trying to get married. I can't get a husband. I can't get a wife. I can't get... No. They are afraid of what... You will be, but you didn't know. But now you know. Now you know that the devil is afraid of you. Now you know. Now you know. Now you found out 
Now, uh oh. You see, the more you grow in God, the more you pick your battles. There's a realm you get to in God, you don't fight everything and uh, anything. Hey, Rishana, you're welcome. No, you don't fight. You choose your battles, write it down. You get to a realm in God, you choose your battles. You get to a realm in God, you speak, and things happen. Now that you know, you don't need to wrestle with the devil. Knowledge is power. Knowledge brings exploits. Knowledge gives confidence. Thank you. Knowledge brings prosperity. Knowledge brings supremacy. Knowledge brings efficiency. Knowledge brings joy. You see a child who can play the piano, they make joyful noise. But if you see a child who knows how to play the piano, oh my goodness, the music is so sweet. It brings joy. It makes the child happy. It gives them confidence. Whatever you do in life, be a student of knowledge, information. A woman was sharing with me today about her husband who was COVID-19 positive. She was in one country, her husband was in another country. Hear me, I'm not a doctor, I'm not prescribing, but by the time the woman finished hearing, I noticed that there was something she knew. She said that she told her husband to get out of that hospital. He was about to be put on ICU. That's how, that was how sick this man was with COVID-19. And she said to him, tell the doctor to send you home. And you know me, I like to know stuff because knowledge will give you a shortcut to the top. Knowledge will give you the shortest journey to the top. Knowledge will give you the shortest journey to success. Always look for how things are done, not where things are done, not what things are done. How is this thing done? You get attacked at night. How? Why? What's the loophole? What's going on? You have job issues? Father, I'm a tiger. What's going on? And I said to her, so you asked your husband with COVID-19, was choking, couldn't breathe. You asked him to go home? And she said, yes, sir. Why? She said, because I found some things that I knew that could help my husband. Like what? So she told him, go home, go get your garlic, <laughs> oh God, get your ginger, get your this, get your that, and start drinking it hot. Uh-huh. What else? Get your kettle, heat up the water, cover yourself with a thick towel. Begin to steam your nose and steam. I mean, she was telling me stuff. I'm like, don't let the, uh, President Trump hear this, please. <laughs> He'll just ban you <laughs> from ever entering America. Yeah. Don't, don't say that. She said, yes, sir. You kidding me? She said, long story short, the husband did it for a couple of days, was taking all I, I mean, <sighs> completely healed. Long story short, I spoke to that man today. 
but he's driving around, he's out in the streets. I spoke to him a while ago. He said, oh, he, is, uh, he was on his way to the bank. What? She said, she told him, it's not by hospitalization, it's by knowledge. Knowledge. Have you ever tried, glory be to God for that. Now, I don't recommend that. Please, let me put a disclaimer right there. Thank God. And I said to her, what do you, she said, no. You, you, you steam, steam, a lot of steam yourself, sweat this thing out, sit in the sun, get some air, go back in. And then she said something most important. She said, she told her husband, stay in the word, declare the word, I shall live, I shall not die, declare positive words. The pain will come, the ache will come, stay in it. I mean, hot water steam, just going in and go. I don't know where this came from. I don't know. I don't know, please. My own position is that there shall be no sickness, no disease, no uh, fear, no uh, COVID, no virus, no plague is allowed near us or our houses in the name of Jesus. Say amen to that. Most importantly, the word of God from 107 verse 20. He sent his word. He sent his word. Garlic. Because some of you would text me and say, Pastor, what was that your concoction? <laughs> Garlic, ginger. Um, where is my wife? Garlic. Ginger, um, honey, and uh, garlic, ginger, honey, uh, what, one more thing, lemon, thank you, lemon, oh, look, see, look, they're writing on Periscope, so um, you all know this stuff, you didn't tell the world, see, see all these glory house people, command your dead people, <laughs> Ooh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. I, I heard about those things, but I didn't know about the steaming part of it. See, all of you, you knew all this stuff and you didn't tell nobody. You, you should send, go tweet it. So, the, yeah, somebody saying, oh, yeah, since I was a child. The other person says, you told us the other day. Oh, oops. I told you. Oops. <laughs> a lime, too. There you go. Oh, yeah. Somebody said we... Uh -huh, we know and we use them. Somebody said turmeric. Okay, somebody said lime. All right. Well, looks like you people. I'm waiting for you to say this is the scriptural verse that I stand on. Sick days. Okay, you used to take that stuff. Okay. Bitter cola. Oh, boy. How does bitter cola work? <laughs> oh boy. This is the word. <laughs> Remember 1 Peter 2.24. By his stripes, garlic, ginger, flora is riding, mint leaves, turmeric. Okay, all right. Now, it's getting to be like uh, the Garden of Eden concoction. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Psalm 91, there you go. The First Peter 2.24, there you go. You must, with all your concoction, Make sure you stand on the word of God. <laughs> Bitter leaves. Okay. All right. Now you're saying some things that some people, you got to tell them the nearest African store to you guys or, or um, Caribbean store. Okay. Or Indian store. Onions. Okay. Or Middle Eastern store. Now others are throwing in stuff. You see elderberry. Oh boy. I should have just kept quiet. Well, the brother got free. That's the most important thing. Whatever method, medical, herbal, dietary, weather, willpower, uh, mental ascent, uh, whatever. Okay. Oh, boy. Somebody give us orange, lemon, grass, orange leaves, lemon, it is, you boil them, cover yourself in blankets. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Now, who, which doctor is this? Dr. Mercy. Oh, Lord, have mercy. 
Thank God. Okay, just know that by the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. Not are, we're healed. All those things work together because Jesus paid for your sickness and paid for your healing. Uh-oh, now somebody, a nurse is saying, sleep on your stomach. Honey, I don't know about sleeping on no stomach because some people's uh, storage is in their stomach. I'm not going to go there. Genesis 41, stay in the word. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The most important thing is that Jesus broke the power of sickness and disease. And I decree in the name of Jesus that none of us, none of our loved ones, none of those connected link with us shall go down on the account of any plague in the name of Jesus. Rachano, give me your own formula, okay? Oh, okay, laying on your stomach helps your lungs. Okay, that's from a nurse. I take that. Okay, that makes, makes sense. You see, this is all because of knowledge. That's my point. Those who don't know, those who didn't know, those who didn't know how to, Lack of knowledge will make people a victim. Lack of knowledge will make people a victim. Lack of knowledge will make people a victim. Lack of knowledge. If you know how to get petroleum from the soil, how long you deep and so on, you got knowledge in it. If you know how to fly a jet, then knowledge. Knowledge gives confidence. Knowledge increases your income. Not They pay you as a petroleum engineer because you know something that a, 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 get, a, a mechanic doesn't know. Mm, the, you shall know the truth, John 8, 32. And the truth you know shall set you free. Yes, a cab driver solves, solves problems, but a doctor solves bigger problems. And we love everybody. We need them. A plumber solves problems, but a dentist solves greater problems. Now, you can imagine now how many problems God uses pastors to solve. Please share on Facebook. Let the numbers come up. Share it, share it, share it. A lot of people will not get it until you share, and then they get the notification. Some people don't, don't get notifications until you share it, and you share it again. Thank you very much. Genesis 41, verse 39 to 43. Genesis 41, 39 to 43. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God had showed you all this. Showed you what? You can't stop a man that has knowledge, folks. Mm -mm. It is one of the most powerful things that can happen to anybody. Etta, you're welcome. Joseph said to Pharaoh, you had a dream, seven cows, another seven cows, first seven cows, second seven cows. This is what it means. I know by knowledge, Joseph became the prime minister, not by fighting, not by strength like 
Samson, knowledge. The people who rule the world rule the world by knowledge. Less than 10% of the world leaders, those who rule and reign in every area of life, less than 10% of the population. Why? Knowledge. Knowledge. And we're talking spiritual stuff. Hey, Tashi. Knowledge of spiritual stuff. I told you the story of how they used to tell us, put on the helmet of salvation, take on the shield of faith, put on the garment of this, put on the, the belt of this, put on the salve, take on the, the sword. And boy, I used to do this thing every day. One day the Lord said to me, what are you doing? I said, I'm putting, he said, no, there's a shortcut to it. Really? Where is it? Put on Christ. Simple. I put on Christ. If cancer cannot kill Christ, it cannot kill you. If any plague couldn't kill Christ, it cannot kill you. I used to do, let me give you another one. I used to say, oh, we bind every principality and power. We take authority over spiritual wickedness in high places. We cast you down. We command you, come out of our church. Leave this territory. We take. One day the Lord said to me, what are you doing? When the Lord asked me, what are you doing? I know that, uh-oh, I'm missing something. He said, Christ has defeated all these things. He defeated them, principalities and powers. You're binding a defeated foe. You're, you're binding a defeated foe. Why? Why? He's defeated. But the reason why he's still in your life or harassing you or threatening you is because you do not know. Even if you know, you do not know how to enforce what has been done. Ignorance. So, how do you enforce it? Remember Ephesians 6.12. Ephesians 6.12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Verse 13, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Verse 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy of the wicked, Verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Fine. So this was my routine, morning and night. 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 This was my schedule. Every time I wanted to conduct deliverance, I'll go through this. And one day, I said, I mean, by the time I'm done just dressing up for battle, and there are books, I have books on them. By the time I'm done dressing for battle, 
I am exhausted. And one day the Lord said to me, let me show you a shortcut. Oh, hallelujah. He means there's a, yes, this is the shortcut. That's what I'm looking for. This is just to show you how knowledge gives you confidence. You fight with aggression. You fight like a mad person. You fight. Ephesians, same Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 8. Ephesians 4 and 8. Wherefore, he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. He led captivity captive. Hmm. If he led captivity captive, then what, what are you uh, fighting? He led captivity captive. Wow. So you're fighting what has been defeated. Yeah, Pastor, I know, but it's just that, um, um, you know, I just want to do some spiritual gymnastics so that, um, you know, before I start praying, you know, I have to, I have to deal with, I have to really, you know, there are churches like that. Every service, they are roasting the devil. They are binding the devil. They are binding the devil. Colossians, Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Let's start from 11. Because this will help somebody in your spiritual warfare. If you know there are certain things the devil will throw you away, you ignore it. Colossians chapter 2 verse 11. In whom also ye were circumcised with the circumcision not made without, not made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who had raised him from the dead. When Jesus died on the cross, you and I died on the cross. When he was buried, you and I were buried. When on the third day he was resurrected, we are now resurrected. We are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who had raised him from the dead. If Jesus, Jesus, I died, I was buried and resurrected, I'm now a new man in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away. Hallelujah. All things are passed away. You can't ancestral, there's no ancestral power, no ancestral spirit, no water spirit, no ancestral altar, no demonic altar, no satanic power, no witch or wizard, except I am not born again, shall be able to overcome me. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now you may know it, but you've got to say it. You've got to declare it. No witch, no wizard, no idol, no idol worshiper shall be able to consult their powers and locate you and I again. Why? Because if they can find Christ through their crystal ball and still be alive, then they can find me. Because my life is hidden God in Christ, in, in Christ in God. Buried with him. Verse 13. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, had he quickened together with him, having forgiven all, having forgiven you all trespasses. All trespasses. So when a preacher sees you and says, uh, you must confess the sins of your father, confess the sins of your mother, 
will confess the sins of those who live before you is because of uh, your black, uh, the God, God cursed black people, God cursed people, there's a curse in your village, curse in your family, curse in your town, curse in the soil, they bury something in the ground, uh, somebody went to the river to call your name, and somebody tied you in some place. No, they can tie you as long as you're ignorant. Now you know. So you use the blood of Jesus. Let me give you a spiritual equation. And we continue. They want, I wish I could sketch it. You, somebody write blood. When they require blood, write blood. Then you write equal signs like in math. The blood of Jesus. Somebody who can tie fast, do it for me. Adrian or whoever, faithful somebody. Write blood with small b. Equals blood of Jesus. Big B. Hurry, somebody. Hurry. Small blood. They require small blood. You answer. You put an arrow. The blood of Jesus will answer. They want a sacrifice. Uh -huh. Thank you, Tamika. They want blood. The blood of Jesus will answer. They want a sacrifice. Thank you, AMC World. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody on Facebook, come on now. They want a sacrifice. Yes, thank you, Deborah. The sacrifice of Jesus will answer. Thank you, Funke. The sacrifice of Jesus will answer. They want an altar. They say, oh, the problem is that there's an altar speaking against you. Guess what? The cross of Jesus Christ is the altar of the universe. The most high altar. Thank you. They say there's one altar in the water. It is speaking. That altar is not letting anybody raise up their head in this family. <laughs> Just laugh. I say, ah, I have an altar already. You, you don't need to set up any other altar. Except any altar I'm setting up now is an altar unto God. Hallelujah. They say, oh, Pastor Doris, you're welcome. They say, okay, um... Um, um, uh, uh, we, we see you, we see you, if you don't pray, you're going to have an accident tomorrow, or you see yourself in a coffin, or you see yourself uh, with the dead people, or you see yourself, uh, all that stuff, you say, ah, you see me, I was buried. The day Jesus was buried, the day he was resurrected, I was, I was buried and resurrected before the dead were died. Who died. He said, you are talking to a man who has conquered death. He said, oh, if you go out, there will be an accident, they will kill you. He said, no, 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 no. I was killed on the cross of Calvary. You're looking at a person who died and came back to life. My point is this, learn by knowledge to silence these voices. You say, oh, there's a curse, there's obia, oh, somebody's threatening you, they will use juju, they will say stuff, and they say, oh, be careful, whatever that juju man, they say, ah, juju man, I am the son of a juju man. His name is Jesus. Who made the herbs? Who made the roots? Who made the chicken? Who made the, the, the birds they use? Who created the heaven and earth? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And my father will speak to those your roots and herbs and leaves and all your enchantment and tell them to backfire against you if you dare touch me. Yeah, pastor, they give me any, something to eat in the dream, the satanic poison. 
Do you know that the Bible says, if you eat or drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm you. Bishop T.D. Jakes understood what I'm sharing with you. He said he would come to his church in Dallas, Texas, and he would see chicken and sacrifices, blood sacrifice, in Dallas, Texas, in the U.S. of A, America. <laughs> and one day he came and said, listen, you people, you are killing your chicken and wasting your chicken. Why don't you eat your chicken? You're wasting your chicken. You're sprinkling blood and calling your devils and doing sacrifice with chicken at the church. You're wasting your time. God said he will build his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Why don't you eat? Oh, they kill a dog, they kill a pig, they kill a cow, they kill human beings, they do blood, and they say if anybody, they swore that nobody will lift up their head in this family. No. They will try to do it. If you don't know who you are, whose you are, your power. So you know it, you say it, you stand on it. Let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I'm rich. You cannot be denied citizenship when the earth is lost in the fullness thereof. Any city you wish to live in belongs to your father. When you enter there, you slap that city three times on the floor and say, Open! You're my father's land. Yield to me. There's a realm you get to when the devil hears your name, he will flee. Your name, you're not there yet. By knowledge. The second way you can be unstoppable is by demonstration of the power of God. This shine shall follow them that believe. They shall cast out devil. Not just speak, you cast them out. You cast them out by thunder, by fire. You pray in tongues you, you've never prayed before. By passion. They say, oh, you'll never be pregnant. Your tubes are blocked. Your ovaries are this. Really? Say yes. Say, ah. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You saw well, doctor, but there's something else you don't know. Say yes. You see this body? It doesn't belong to me. This body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Is a temple. This body is a house of the Holy Ghost. Is a house. God cannot live in his house and sickness will dare come to mess around. No, wouldn't happen. He said, well, they, they, there's no job and they're about to close the company. What am I going to eat? What am I going to drink? There's a way out by knowledge. When you are in between, there are two things that will make God move on your behalf. Prayer and service in the house of God. Every child of God must be in the prayer department in their church. If your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, then what is COVID-19 doing there? It will be roasted by fire. Let's go on. Colossians chapter 2. Are you getting blessed? You're unstoppable. By knowledge. That's enough. I mean, we can go on by power. But let's, let's continue and see how the Lord will lead it. Just let me know if you're being blessed. If not, uh, amen now. Verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us which was contrary to us, 
and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross, not the cross, his own cross. If Jesus took the handwriting ordinances, things that were written against you and I that we don't know about, documentations, photographs, things that your fathers, your mothers, my fathers, my mothers did that we are not aware of. If God gave us victory over them, they, they, therefore, anybody who comes to say, well, there's, I see, um, was your father a bush doctor? You say, yeah, yeah, I was told he was a bush. Oh, it's because of the things he did that you're not getting pregnant. <laughs> Laugh. I say, listen, Philippians yeah, 2 and 14. God knows those things. Thank you, Lord. And he deleted them. Yes, you're right. Things were written. Things were said. There were evil things done in my lineage, in my family. Very bad things. They were written, documented. But when I got born again, God deleted all of them. Don't you see a delete button in your computer? Don't you see a delete button in your iPad? Don't you see a delete button in your phone? Hello? And then verse 15. Verse 15. That's the philemia we're getting into now. Verse 15. Remember, what was the verse we read in Ephesians? Somebody remind me. We wrestle not again, uh, principality, we wrestle not again, flesh above, and again, principalities and powers of darkness of this world. Somebody remind me. We wrestle. Who has time to wrestle? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, and we rebound them, then then we fighting, and this and that. No, no. I don't wrestle nothing. I ain't got no time for wrestling. Why? Ephesians says we're wrestling. We're wrestling. We're wrestling. Who has time to wrestle? No, I enter into the finished work. Colossians, Ephesians 5 and 12. Look at this. It says, uh -huh, thank you. Uh, DJ of Ren, Ephesians 5 and 12, 4, no, Ephesians 5, 6 and 12, 6 and 12, look at it, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, and uh, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Correct. But now, the same person who wrote Ephesians, Apostle Paul, also wrote Colossians. Now go to Colossians chapter 2 and verse 15. Colossians 2 and 15. Ephesians 6 and 12 versus Colossians 2 and 15. Ephesians 6 and 12. Colossians... 2 and 15. Put them side by side. And you tell me your choice. Ephesians 6 and 12. Colossians 2 and 15. Put them side by side. Somebody just put type the, you don't need to type the, the passages. Just so you, somebody watching you can remember and go check them out. Colossians 2 verse 15. Okay. Look at what he says. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show. There you go. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them. In it. He made, he took, we're wrestling against principalities and powers in Ephesians, whereas in Colossians, they've been defeated. 
In Colossians, they are defeated. In Ephesians, somebody is busy wrestling instead of upgrading and saving yourself all that trouble by knowledge. So now you know about Colossians 2.15, you should declare it, you should say it, you should pray it, that no principality, no power, no demonic entity can overcome me because I am in Christ, I'm a new creature, all things are passed away. This is a highly technical thing I'm teaching you. You basically have to argue like an attorney. You must argue like an attorney. You must argue like an attorney because you are one. Remember your brother is an attorney. His name is Jesus. He's our advocate. My point is this. Do not let the enemy lie to you. Do not let the enemy rip you off. Do not let the enemy cheat you. Don't. 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 Okay. Go to verse 29. Verse 29. Beautiful Esther. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, verse 29. Verse 20, Colossians 2.20. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are you subject to ordinances? Huh? You still going back when you're free. Let me read another version of it. The NIV says, verse 15, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross, poverty, sickness, disease, shame, COVID-19, infirmity, plagues, blood tubes, blood uh, ovaries, uh, no, no womb, mental issues, uh, hormonal issues, uh, whatever it is, Jesus not only triumphed over them, he broke their power. He dragged them openly before the streets. Verse 16, Therefore do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival. Religious festival. New Yam festival. Uh, this festival in those villages. No, 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 no. You are above that. You are above that because you're in Christ. Verse 20, since you died with Christ to the elemental spiritual forces of this world, elemental spiritual forces, queen of the coast, king of the coast, marine spirit, water spirit, witchcraft spirit, familiar spirit, seducing spirit, Somebody pursuing you in the dream. Somebody attacking you in the dream. Somebody giving you food and drink. Somebody stabbing you. Somebody having sex with you. Somebody taking your money. Somebody pursuing you. Uh -uh. You cannot pursue a spirit that is higher than you. In the spirit realm, they respect authority and hierarchy. No. 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 They cannot try it. Why? Because there is fire on your life. You're not ordinary anymore. Why? You're unstoppable. You're not unstoppable because Pastor Jesus said so. No, you're unstoppable because you belong to God. They can't push you around anymore. 
So you've got to take your stand. Remember what I said. Get the knowledge. Declare it. Write down the Bible passages. Pray them. Say them till they get deep in your spirit. Then they go over to your flesh. Then you're dangerous. Nobody can push you around. You, can't, you cannot stop a moving train. You cannot stop a moving jet. If you try so, you're trying it at your own peril. Do you know that God has great plans for your life and my life? We are on assignment for God. We're not here because we just wanted to come here. Joseph understood that. They lied against him. This whole book is a book of unstoppable people. It's a book for unstoppable people. It's a book about unstoppable people. Study. Tell me. They tried to stop Abraham? No way. Isaac? Mm -mm. Jacob? Mm -mm. Joseph? Caleb? Joshua? Jeremiah? Isaiah? Elisha? Elijah? Esther, Mary, Elizabeth, Ruth, Naomi, Peter, John, Paul. Who? Well, they tried it. Look, they killed James, the brother of John. <laughs> but when they took Peter and locked him in, they found that there are some people you cannot arrest. There are people who are above death. They tried to kill Peter, but prayer was made for him. The church began to pray and say, God, mm -mm, enough is enough. And an angel showed up and brought Peter out. I want to prophesy over somebody watching that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the God that brought Peter out will bring you out. Say amen. He will bring you out. He will bring you out. He will bring you out. He will bring you out in the name of Jesus. They've tried to kill you. They, you're worrying about job and income and money to eat and money to drink. We're talking serious, heavy stuff here. You will fulfill destiny. You will shine. You will break through. You will celebrate. You will not remain alone like this. Why? Because I know that God never forsakes his own. You're unstoppable. That's why they've been trying to fight you, bring this, bring that, try to do this to you and do that to you because they know that once you get your breakthrough, boy, oh boy, you will help people, you will help your church, you will help command your day. You will help Glory House. You will help people. You will be a force. That's why they try to kill you, try to poison you, try to sex you, try to stab you, try to fire you, try to bring accidents, try to make you fall off and fall into pits in your dream. All of these things, you are more than a conqueror. You are still standing, and because you're still standing, God has great plans for you, somebody. Your best days are ahead of you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God in the name of Jesus. They tried David. They couldn't stop him. They tried Peter, like I said. They couldn't stop him. Hallelujah. Sometimes you've got to write down these Bible verses and begin to declare them. Jesus, you declare them in the morning, in the noontime, in the afternoon. Then somebody comes and sticks their finger and says, 
I will kill you. I will kill you. You will see what I will do. I will kill you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just laugh and go home. Why? The battle belongs to the Lord. Just go home, praise your father. After praising him, he said, Daddy, there's somebody I saw down the road. They said they want to kill you. So you go fight. For let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. The, this thing I'm teaching you, let it go down to your spirit. Here, not here. I'm unstoppable. I'm unkillable. I'm unstoppable. I'm unkillable. I'm unstoppable. I'm unkillable. I am fruitful. I'm blessed of the Lord. I'm blessed of the Lord. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. My best days are ahead of me. None can stop me. They tried to stop David. It didn't work. They tried to stop uh, Joseph. It didn't work. Nobody can stop me. Father, over to you. And you're praising the Lord. And you're giving God praise. You will beg God to stop fighting when he starts. It's not by boasting. God doesn't fight by shouting. No. When we were in school, let me, let me read something to you that the Lord gave me to give to somebody. Because you've been dealing with this thing for a long time. They always frighten you and say, oh, there's an altar, altar of your father's house, altar of your father's house. You've been hearing it all your life. Altar of your father's house, altar of your mother's house. You've been praying since you were born again. Up till now, these altars are not dead. <laughs> when are they going to die? When you are 100 years old? Huh? Every day, altar of your father's house, altar of your father's house, altar of your mother's house. Your mother did something. Your father did something. Your uncle did something. Your auntie did something. There's always something. Always this. Always that. Hmm. Go to Judges. Judges 23. Hola, my Shabarada. Is it Judges 19? Judges 19. Let me slow down. Judges. Let me go back to King James. Because people said, you know, they used to tell me all those type of things, and I believe them. I said, there's an altar. You see, an altar is somewhere. It's the altar that is speaking, and, uh, you know, you must uh, come and... No, 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 no. I belong to a higher altar. Mm -mm. No, no, no. <laughs> I should tell you again the story of the electric iron. <laughs> oh boy, this group command your day, people. That's what you want to hear, right? <laughs> Oh, boy, oh, boy. Let, let, let me get the, the story of Balaam and Balak. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Balaam and Balak. Numbers 23. Is there Numbers 23, 19? Let's start from where he said, uh, you should build him uh, seven altars. Seven altars. Seven. If they set up seven altars against you in the village, how many, where, where are you going to fight? Uh, set up uh, psychic altars. Numbers 23 and 1. Where are you now? Numbers 23 and 1. I need to establish it. And Balaam said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars. Seven altars. And prepare me here seven oxen and seven rams. 
If they build seven altars against you in the in your village, <laughs> how many of seven with seven rams and seven cows? Now that's some serious altars, but it will not work. It will not work if you know. Are you building? You better eat your goat and chicken. I am an altar of God. I'm a temple of God. In me, there's an altar. In me, there's an altar. I'm not just I'm a shrine. I'm a temple. I'm a shrine. I'm an altar. In me, there's a holy of holies of God. Don't let me speak. That's how fire is generated. You're unstoppable because you carry fire. Was it not how my cousin used to beat me up? Little boy, 11, 12, bully me every day. Since you asked for the story. Then one day, I kept growing, kept eating. <laughs> Ah, and one day she came, one morning, I was getting ready to go to school, ironing my clothes, and she came again like before, and something sparked in my head, am I not the son of my father? Would my father be happy to see me like this? I will fight back. Whatever happens, let it happen. When you are sick and tired of these things, the devil will know. It will back up. I grabbed the iron, hot iron, and went after her. I said, today, I will press you like my school uniform. <laughs> she saw, I don't know what she saw, some madness, something in my eyes. She turned around and oh, fled and ran screaming. Ay, 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 ay. Now, don't do that. This is America. Don't do that now, please. Okay? I didn't send you. You, 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 don't, don't call me now. Amen now. I ran after her. She screamed. Oh, he wants to kill her. He wants to kill her. I said, you are dead today. That was my day of independence. <laughs> that was the day I got free from Egyptian bondage. <laughs> from Egyptian oppression. I got delivered and free. By the time I came back to finish my ironing, I was panting and sweating. And boy, did I feel good. I felt so free. From that day till today, I'm still free. And if the Son of God sets you free, you're free indeed. Sometimes it's not um, spiritual theory. Practicality. Sometimes practicality, sometimes bizarre boldness confront the thing that is confronting you. Call that thing by name. You want an altar? Yeah. Here is the blood, the body of Jesus. Here is the blood of Jesus. Break it. Pray over it. Drop it on the ground. Pour the blood of Jesus. You want the body of a goat? I give you human body. You want the blood of a cow? I give you the blood of Jesus. You put it down and command the altar to speak. Altars are not built. Altars don't have power until the builder stands on it and speaks. Every altar speaks. They're uh, having sex in the dream. You've done everything. Three things. Get the communion. Pray well. Go out in your front yard and say, Heaven and earth, 
This is the altar of the blood of Jesus and his body. And today, let the altar speak against every altar speaking against me. You want blood? Here is blood. You want him sacrifice? Here is the finished sacrifice of Christ. Then you take a seed, serious seed, and give it to God. And watch what God will do. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah now. Ah, but I don't have money. But when you go to a psychic, they tell you what to bring. You bring it. Mm -hmm. I was so desperate to get free. I would sell stuff. You, you can't, these things, listen, you better fight these altars once and for all. You, you ain't got no time. These forces have been fighting you for five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 50 years, some of you in your family. Was you know how they told me? And since you like stories, you're going to like this. You command your dear people, glory house people. They told me about this, in, this, 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 woman, this person, a woman, terrible woman. For years, I knew she didn't like me, but I didn't know she hated me that much. Not for anything, just because she saw me as a threat. Mm -hmm. But one day I began to pray. I began to groan and pray and agonize and complain and grumble before God. See, one thing is for somebody to hate you. Another is for somebody to hate you so much, far beyond what you thought and how much they hated you. David would say that he hates the, he hates the enemies of God with perfect hatred. Hatred that is perfect, that is serious. Well, I began to pray. I said, Father, I don't believe that this woman is this bad. But if she is, let her fall and break her leg. Now I made a mistake. Honestly, I didn't believe that she was, that she had such perfect hatred for me. I was just, just testing the ground. I should have said that she should break her neck. But I'm on command your day. I'm on social media, so I can't say that. But, oops, it came out already. I just prayed and forgot about it. A few days later, I got a phone call that the woman broke her leg. What? She sure broke her leg. Ah. I said to the Lord, thank you. So I learned, when you're dealing with your enemy, go for the maximum punishment. Go for the maximum sentence. I'm not talking of somebody uh, who doesn't like you on your job, and you say they should break their leg, break their neck. Uh, Pastor Cusey said, no, 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 no. That is not perfect hatred. Somebody hates you so much that they want you dead, want your father, your mother, your siblings wiped out. Not that they, they are alive and not completely taken out of the earth. Hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now that is somebody who is not willing to repent. And in the name of Jesus, I don't know if you want to say amen to this, Whoever hates you so much that they want you off of this earth, may the earth swallow them. May the earth swallow them. May the earth swallow them in the name of Jesus. They will not break their legs. 
They will break their necks so that you can break through and break forth in the name of Jesus. I wish I had time to tell you forces that try to stop people. Premature death, accidents, wicked forces and wicked people, demonic forces, poverty, lack, hatred and evil cycles, early satisfaction, harsh life, personal enemies, witchcraft, ancestral limitations, personal limitations, lack of knowledge and wisdom and understanding, spiritual carelessness and foolishness. All, there is no end to what can stop a Christian. No end. But David said, I was young, but now I'm old. I've not seen the righteous forsaking nor their seed begging bread. I decree over you that no matter as many as gather together for your sake, they shall fall. They shall fall in the name of Jesus. No power can resist the blood of Jesus. No power can resist his body. Anything that you cannot see in the body of Jesus Christ is not permitted in your body. Any plague that didn't kill Jesus can kill you. In any case, you died with him, buried with him, resurrected with him, so you are unkillable, you are undiable. No wonder Apostle Paul said, Jesus said, Jesus said, into God's hands he committed his spirit. He gave up the ghost. Nobody could kill Jesus until he was ready. He gave up his spirit to the Father. Paul said he had finished his course. Now he's ready to go. They were killing Stephen. Stephen said he saw Jesus standing. They tried to kill Paul. Paul said he ain't going. <laughs> Nobody will kill you except you agree. And I disagree with your agreement with death, is canceled, is annulled. It shall not stand in the name of Jesus. Get your communion elements. One of the most powerful things you can do is to give your life to Christ. If you have not given your life to Christ, say that prayer right now, a minute. Lord Jesus, forgive my sins. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Give me the grace to live for you. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, you heard the prayer of your people. Wash them with your blood. Save them to the uttermost. Everything about them, all things gone away. Everything becomes new. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And God's people said, Amen. Say it where you are. Say it three times. I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. Say it again. I am unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. In the name of Jesus. We're unkillable, undiable, unstoppable. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, I pray that something will go down into the spirits of your people today. To give them permanent victory and deliverance in the name of Jesus. Am I saying we still, we still do deliverance? Yes, we do. We still do feet washing. We still do water baptism. We still do healing ministry. We still use oil. We still do spiritual warfare. So pastor, what are you doing then if you said we're, the, no, we're enforcing, we're enforcing 
what God did on the cross of Calvary. Somebody says they are 21 years old. They are, they've been depressed for years. I speak deliverance over you in the name of Jesus. When you pray, when you're fasting, when you're giving, when you're interceding, whatever you're doing now is to enforce what has already been done. You're not doing, you're not going to no cross. Jesus is not going to die again at Calvary. He's not going to be buried again. We are being given the power to occupy, to rule, to dominate, to rule as kings until he comes. And let it be your testimony. In the name of Jesus, get your bread. Father, bless the bread today. We receive it. In the name of Jesus, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do ye in remembrance of me. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, you may now eat in Jesus' name. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. We receive the finished work of liberation and blessing in the blood of Jesus. Father, let the blood speak for us. Let the blood arise. Let there be testimonies. Let there be proof of these words we share tonight. In the name of God the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, you may now drink in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for tonight. Take all the glory. For all the testimonies, all the blessings, thank you for all you've done this week, this month, this year thus far. We return all the praise and thanks to you in the name of Jesus. And God's people said amen. Before we go, let's receive the offering for tonight. We receive the offerings Wednesdays, Fridays, Sundays. If you have your offering ready or tithe or first fruit or seed, get it ready. Those in the U.S., you can use cash app, dollar sign, Glory Church. Those overseas, you can use PayPal. You go to our website, glorytoglorychurch.org. Click on the donate button, and indicate if it's a tithe or offering or seed or what have you. Those uh, want to use Zelle, Seven seven zero nine zero nine five thousand. Thank you, Genevieve, for watching. Genevieve was watching from West Africa tonight. They want, I don't want to say the nation. The, the PayPal Glory Television at Gmail dot com. Glory Television at Gmail dot com. You don't need to go to our website. Just go to Glory. Click Glory Television at Gmail dot com to show up. You can also mail your check if you want to post it. You can do so, Glory House, 4877C, Lawrenceville Highway, Tucker, Georgia, 30084. Okay, somebody's thanking God for complete healing, and to God be all the praise. Father, I pray about the tithes, offering seeds of your people today and all of this week. Bless it, sanctified with your blood. Let there be testimonies of deliverance in finances, in healing, in in favor, in job, in occupation, in career, in every area, even concerning our loved ones, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And God's people said, Amen. Thank you for the investment of an hour and 37 minutes. 
and I have to let you go. Have a great morning, afternoon, evening, where you are. You can find all of the broadcasts on YouTube. If you don't want to deal with Facebook and social media, you can go on YouTube and look for Pastor Choosy. Every night I upload last night's message is already on YouTube. This message will go on YouTube. All of this, you can listen to Pastor Choosy all day, one message after another on YouTube. Look for Pastor Choosy, okay? And thanks for being my friend and partner. Sunday morning, I'll be broadcasting from the Sanctuary of Glory House, okay? And they're putting the information on Facebook. Those who want to mail their check or use uh, online or cash app, thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. And I'll see you on Sunday. If you're making checks, make checks to Glory House World Church. Thank you for your generosity. God bless you. I'll see you on Sunday. Don't forget, it's not over until you win. Share this message. Get on your, get the copy. Go to Facebook or Periscope. Copy, paste on all your contacts, all your family, especially your loved ones, brothers, sisters, cousins, nephews, nieces. I say to them, listen, all this bring money to go be, bury something, dig something. There is something, some shrine, somebody say to them, Listen, take the blood of Jesus, take your communion bread and say, this is our answer to this. And let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Get ready for divine visitation. Some of you are gonna have dreams tonight, visitations, manifestations, activations, impartations, transportations, being brought out from one place to another, restorations, elevations, promotions. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Let me know, and the Lord bless you. If you've not received your uh, prayer handkerchief, be on the lookout. It will get to you, okay? If you didn't receive some of you asked for oil, it will get to you, all right? You asked for prayer points uh, from last night and two nights ago. Go to my Facebook page, Heal Our Land. Heal Our Land. You will see my picture there. You can get the prayer points from last night. You can like that page. So anytime I post something on it, you can get it. Okay? God bless you. Thanks for being my friend and partner and my family. See you Sunday morning. It's not over until you win. Bye-bye.